Thank you, Mr. Chair. And through you, can the minister confirm that she has reached out to the WHO in support of the Health Committee's request to speak to Dr. Alward? The Honourable Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I personally have not reached out to the WHO. Thank you. Mr. Jenneru. As provinces begin to reopen their economies and Canadians are encouraged to return to work, is the government confident in the tools currently available to adequately trace cases and prevent a large second wave? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, in fact, the Honourable Member is correct. Tracking and testing uh, is going to be a very important component of keeping Canadians safe. We are working with the provinces and territories as we speak to make sure that we have a comprehensive approach that will ensure the safety of Canadians when they return to work. Mr. Jenneru. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, how many tests would Canada need to be able to conduct to reopen the economy? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the question that the member opposite ask, is asking is a difficult one because, in fact, there are testing strategies that are determined by uh, jurisdiction. However, okay, having said we'll that, go the back federal to government Mr. is working go back to, to make Mr. sure General. that capacity exists. Through you, Mr. Chair, what is Canada's current testing capability? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Chair, our current testing capability is about 60,000 tests per day. Mr. General. How many Canadian companies have properly applied through the buy and sell portal to supply Canada with PPE? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I don't have the exact number of how many companies have applied uh, through buy and sell. It's somewhere in the range of 5,000 to 6,000 companies. I know my colleague, uh, Minister Baines, has worked carefully to contact all of those companies. We'll go back to Mr. General. How many of these Canadian companies have been approved to begin per producing PPE to the Government of Canada? The Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm looking for the uh, detailed information on how many companies have been approved, but I can say it's uh, a fair number of companies, Mr. Speaker. There are a variety of different devices that are uh, being analyzed through Health Canada. Uh, the, the determination of Health Canada is that the devices that are sold in Canada must be safe, obviously, for Canadians. And so we continue we'll to go do back that to Mr. General. How many of these applications have received a response from the government? majority of applicants through the buy and sell webpage have received a response. Mr. Jenneru. With tools, with tools currently in place, is the government confident that Canada can manufacture enough PPE to supply our frontline and essential service workers? The Honourable Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and of course, I'm sure the member is aware that personal protective equipment is in uh, hot demand all across the world as countries prepare and uh, manage their respective outbreaks. Uh, here at the Government of Canada, the member is well aware that we have both a procurement process and a domestic production process, and we are, we believe, turning a corner. We the, have uh, Mr. Jenneru. Has the minister heard from patient groups that the PMPRB regulatory changes will negatively affect drug supply? The Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In fact, there are some uh, members of Canadian society who have concerns with the PMRPB, and there are others that do not. Thank you. Jenneru. Has, has the minister heard from patient groups, though, on the PMP regulatory changes? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Obviously, my department and uh, my office are in regular uh, conversations with patient groups. We stand committed to ensuring that patients who suffer with a variety of conditions get the support and the treatment that they deserve. Mr. Jenneru. With COVID-19 currently threatening Canada's drug supply, will the government delay the PMP, PMPRB regulatory changes scheduled to come into force July 1st? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I think the Honourable Member knows that our government has been committed to ensuring that uh, medication is available to Canadians and that uh, the cost of medication does not stand in the way of Canadians getting the medication that they deserve and they need to treat their illnesses. We'll continue that important work. Mr. General. Again, Mr. Speaker, will the scheduled, delay, scheduled July 1st date be rescheduled or delayed? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government will always remain committed to the work that we started in our mandate and that has been supported by Canadians to ensure that the cost of medication is not something that makes medication inaccessible to Canadians.